Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this one I'm going to show you my e-file product removal and prep routine using Willow Academy e-file bits. So to start off with I'm using the penultimate bit in fine and um, I think you can get it in coarse as well um, but the fine one is perfect for me because the majority of the time I do build gel overlays so I've got the build gel and then the gel polish on top so all I'm doing when I'm removing my product is removing that gel polish and the bulk of the build gel underneath leaving a really thin layer so I don't find that I need a really coarse bit because these fine ones eat through the gel polish so easily and it also leaves the surface underneath really smooth as well um, I found that if I used a coarser bit it created a rougher surface so that's going to take me even longer time to smooth out and um, it could also affect my application as well because obviously if the foundation's bumpy um, then the application will be as well and then you'll have to file that and oh, it just means a load of problems so the fine bit removes the product so easily and leaves you with a smooth surface underneath as well so for me it's it's the perfect bit so what you want to do when it comes to the actual filing is you want to put the e-file bit as close to the bottom of the colour as you can without hitting the cuticle or the new nail growth and then you want to really slow and steady um, bring it down with an even pressure if you start you know pushing more or really clunking the bit down at the bottom it's gonna make some bits thinner than others and again that's going to affect your the smoothness of the nail and ultimately your application so you want to pull the skin back with I do it with my thumb on the left hand side and then I do a couple of swipes working my way over to the right side that normally gets rid of the gel polish um, and then again I'll repeat that removing the bulk of the build gel now you want to make sure you're not going back and forth over the nail because this will create friction so you want to put the e-file bit down at the bottom pull it to the end lift it up put it back down again you don't want to be going back and forth so once you've gone as far as you can to the right side there's always a tiny little bit that's left so you want to turn your finger around use the finger on your other hand to pull the skin back and that will allow you to get right down that right side wall Remember to keep your bit flat as well. If you go in at an angle to try and get that last bit, there's a chance that you're going to end up catching the natural nail and that will create what's called rings of fire. So if you keep doing that on every infill and keep catching that natural nail, um, if you were to take all of it off, you would see rings, red rings on the nail from where you've caught it. So you want to try and make sure you're keeping that bit really flat. Um, also it means that if, like myself, if you do a build gel overlay, you're going to have a bit more product. So if you keep that bit flat, it's going to be bringing it down gradually so that when you do get right down to that really thin base layer, um, you're going to be in line with the natural nail and you haven't taken any layers off of the natural nail itself. It'll all be nice and level. Okay, so once you've removed all of that colour and the majority of the bulk of the builder gel as well, you want to go in with your duster brush and remove all the excess dust. Um, this is where you can really analyse the nails, make sure that there aren't any bumpy bits, it's all nice and smooth. Um, and you can see there's still a very, very thin layer of the builder gel um, on that nail. This is my Willow cuticle kit um, and we're going to go in with this last one here which is the flame bit. This is amazing. So it's got quite a pointed edge. So again, you want to make sure you're not going in at an angle. You're keeping it very flat. Um, and it can look quite harsh when you're watching it on video. But what you're trying to do is lift that cuticle. So you're not really touching the nail plate as much as it looks like you are. You are just literally going under that cuticle and sort of lifting the cuticle away from the nail rather than filing from the nail down, if that makes sense. Um, now I have quite stubborn cuticles, so as you can see it creates a lot, like it's lifting so much off there. Um, I do have quite thick cuticles and they're quite stubborn as well, I think I get it from my mum because hers are so tough. 
Um, so I do have to go over it a few times, but again, you are so gentle and because this bit is such high quality, um, it, it lifts it so easily. Like I've had a few um, other ones before I discovered Willow and the point isn't as sharp, so it doesn't sort of make that incision at the cuticle and lift it up. It just sort of dulls it and then you end up having to really dig at it and then you create quite a bit of damage to the natural nail. So although it can be a bit daunting when you're using e-file bits, you really do want good quality because this is nice and sharp. So it means within one and two swipes, you've lifted that cuticle. Can you see there, as I'm going along, you can see it turn whiter because it's no longer attached to that nail plate. All that white stuff is dead. So that's what you want to get rid of. So at the minute, we're just lifting it up so that we can get rid of that and we're not going to disturb the actual, I've forgotten what it's called, any of the actual flesh that is part of the finger because that will hurt. <laughs> so then what I do here is I put the e-file in forward. So at the moment, normally I work in reverse because I'm right-handed. But for this, because I want to make sure I'm really getting in that other side wall, I put it into forward and then go from the middle outwards. And then as you can see, when you get to the edge, if you lie it flat and pull it down, it will then buff that skin around the finger as well, as you can see here. So it's really exposing that whole nail plate so that when you do your application, you can get right down the side walls. There isn't going to be any skin that's still stuck on there if you do this. So then again, get my duster brush, and especially after you've done it this time, you want to make sure you're brushing the dust away from the cuticle because you've just lifted that cuticle. If you brush upwards, you're going to get all that dust in sort of the folds, and you really don't want that. Um, so now we're going in with the ball bit. Um, this one, again, you're not really touching the, the nail plate. It's really hard to see on video, but it's just helping you, that cuticle that you've lifted up, it's just helping lift it even more and if you don't have stubborn cuticles this will actually get rid of the cuticle if you're not a fan of nipping um, so cutting the cuticle this will be enough and this will get rid of that but because I do have quite stubborn cuticles as you can see it sort of gets rid of the the little straggly bits but it doesn't get rid of the main thing so I will have to go back in with my nippers um, but you can see it here on my thumb a lot like my thumb has a lot of cuticle um, and you can see there it got rid of some of that white bit but there's still that stubborn bit right at the corner um, which I'm not going to be able to get rid of with this bit. I think this bit is medium so it is slightly coarser than the flame bit. Um, so if like I said you do have softer cuticles this will probably do the trick but as I don't I will have to go in with the nippers so yeah. Um, and again I change the direction, go back the other way. Um, if it does lift some cuticle that's great um, but mainly I do this so that it's really separated from the nail plate so that when I do go with my nippers it's really easy to just distinguish what is dead cuticle and what isn't this one this really helps with that I find I didn't realize there wasn't any a tiny bit left of that clip otherwise I just, just could have kept talking but um, anyway now I'm coming in with my nippers these are just ones from Amazon I think I think they're only about 10 pounds but they are the best ones I've ever had they're so sharp um, and they just create really good really good cuts so I'm really happy with these um, so what I do I'm gonna try and explain this the best I can with the blade sort of so as you're looking at it now, the blade that's furthest back, I sort of use that to push the cuticle down so that I can see what I'm cutting. If that makes sense, it holds back the part of the finger that I don't want to cut. And then so it means that the only bit, <laughs> this is really hard. Um, the only thing I'm going to cut is a bit of cuticle that is in between those blades. So the back blade I sort of use as a barrier to push back the skin and then it means that the only bit I'm cutting is the bit that's coming in the middle of the blades, which is the, the dead white cuticle, which is what I want to remove. I really hope that makes sense, but I hope you can see it from this video. I'm sort of pushing it back, using it as a barrier, and then I'm just nipping that white bit. That's oh, so satisfying to watch, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. But you'll see on my thumb, I think I get a lot off my thumb. I can't remember, I filmed this a few days ago. Oh no, because the ball bit, I think it did get most of it off, but it's just that little bit left. So as you can see, I'm really pushing that blade back. It won't damage this the, the normal skin of the finger. It will just sort of 
push it out the way and expose that cuticle even more. It lift, helps lift it up. Oh, look at that big bit. Oh, it's sort of separated a bit. Oh no, it's still one piece. Oh, it's so nice to watch. Um, and then on myself, sometimes I do get hard skin around the edges as well because I do sometimes nibble on my fingers. So um, I can cut that off as well. I don't tend to do that on clients just because you can't gauge as easily because obviously you can't feel what they're feeling. So um, I just tend to nip the cuticles of my clients, but on myself, I will go down the side of the finger as well and get any hard skin. I do find that really satisfying. So yeah, I think there's only a little bit of this clip left. So I'll jump back on. Oh no, it's about to change. Okay, yeah, we'll just stay here. <laughs> so this is what they look like after nipping. Um, these are the Willow White Sanding Bands. You get 100 pieces. I've forgotten. I should really put the prices, shouldn't I? Um, but they're the White Sanding Bands. I just love them. So you get your mandrel and then you just literally push it on. You can see the tension in there. It's so secure. I remember when I first got these and I tried to take the sanding band off when it wasn't in the e-file um, handle. So I was just holding the bit with my finger and I was like, oh my God, I know you get these on, but how do you get them off? And then it wasn't till I put it in and I was like, oh, I'll just try now and it just came off. So <laughs> if you're trying to remove the sanding bands, cause they are one use. So when you're on a client, once you've used it, you throw it away because it's, um, because it's like touched their natural nail. Um, so yeah, they are single use. Um, so yeah, just make sure it's in the e-file. You won't do any damage to the e-file by pulling it. You just need that like support because with your finger, it just slips straight out. So anyway, I then go on, this is a really s slow speed, I should have mentioned with the other ones as well, I work at about 5, I think it's 5 to 9 is recommended RPM, so really quite quite slow, nearly, really gentle, and all you're doing is removing the natural shine of that grown out nail. You don't want to be working really high speed, this basically just imitates what you would do with a normal file, but it just saves it saves your hands in the long run because it means that you haven't got to do all that filing um, with just a normal file. This does all the work for you and you've just got to do really slow, gentle movements. Um, I, I really recommend an e-file. I know it can seem quite scary and quite daunting, but it, if you wanted to do nails long term, it's going to save so many things like repetitive strain injury. And to be honest, with a natural, with a, a normal nail file, if you're etching the growth, you can actually do more damage because if you're trying to be quick you, you don't realize how heavy-handed you can be sometimes whereas this you can take your time just stay relaxed with it and you don't want to be going over the same spot more than once um, on here it does look like I go over it quite a few times but what I do is I go over the natural growth make sure that's nicely etched um, and then I will f sort of blend in the builder gel so that it's all really nice and smooth flows into the each other because what can happen is if your builder gel still has quite a bit of thickness to it and you're then trying to file um sorry buff the natural nail the the tiniest little bit of natural nail that's just behind that builder gel can get missed and then when you apply your product um, there's going to be a bit of natural nail in there where it hasn't adhered to very well so you're going to have lifting right in the center of your nail which can be a bugger to get off so um, just make sure the builder gel is taken down as, as thin as possible and that it blends in nicely with the natural nail um, just there as well I went back in with my nippers because I wasn't quite happy with it so at the end just make sure you really analyze your work go back in with any cuticle bits if you think the cuticle needs to be lifted more nip a bit more off um, you can do that just make sure that your prep is perfect because that really is the foundation to having good nails once your prep's down then the application is going to be so much easier it's going to be so much smoother you won't have to refine as much because if the foundation is solid and smooth then the application will be as well obviously as long as you're you're good with application as well but it's going to help you so much more um, than if you start off with a bumpy foundation so just make sure they're really smooth and uh, so now i'm going in with my magpie beauty 240 grit file um, I don't really tend to use any coarser grit than 240 um, because if I am taking down a lot of the length and I will do it with my e-file with this one I, I didn't want to because I'm trying to grow my nails to a really long nice almond shape so all I'm doing really is refining the side walls because as they grow out they do lose their shape just with 
life really um, you know everyday tasks you have to do so you just want to put that shape back in there if you want them really pointed more of a stiletto then that needs to be really crisp but I prefer the softer almond so I'm just sort of tidying up the side walls uh, if you want me to do a more in-depth filing video about like filing the free edge than I can do um, but for now it's literally just a tidy up making sure it goes more into a point than it does rounded um, and yeah what you want to do also when you're filing and trying to get the length the same is you don't want to look at it from where the nail so where the white bit of the nail starts you want to look at it from the bottom of the cuticle um, so line all your cuticles up so that they're all straight together and then you want to make sure that the length of the nails all finishes at the same point so if you measure the nail from the nail that goes past the free edge some people have longer nail beds on some fingers than the others um, so then they're never going to be the right length so you want to line them up and make sure the cuticles are in line and then make sure the lengths all finish at the same place as well and then that way you'll get a perfect perfect set of nails and um, with the thumb I do tend to take it down a bit shorter uh, just because it is the nail that gets the most use out of it I suppose I know we shouldn't use our our nails as tools but let's be honest we all do it opening a can of beans or <laughs> a beer or something <laughs> so um, the thumb is the one that gets the most abuse so I do tend to have that a bit shorter um, but yeah other than that make sure all the four fingers are the same and then again when you're finished oh no I forgot this bit actually so a way of making sure that especially if you're doing almond that it's the right shape you want to imagine there's a line right from the middle of the cuticle at the bottom straight to the top and then you want to look at each side and make sure that they're both going down at the same angle so that the steepness is the same if that makes sense um, and then you just want to adjust each side if one's going down you can see that left side was just to go in more round rather than um, straight down so you just want to adjust that and then check them all over at the end make sure you're happy with the shape again just sort of do that on each finger um, eyeball it and just just make sure that they go down at the same angle they reach the side of the finger at the same angle that sort of thing and this is what I mean by lining up the cuticles so you can see they're all in line and all my lengths finish at the same point as well so that's it these nails are now all prepped to perfection thank you very much for watching um, my next video hopefully will be a nice in-depth sort of back to basics of application so now they're all removed I've got to put them back on again um, so yeah keep an eye out for that please like and subscribe if you like this video and I'll see you in the next one bye